Welcome to Profiling Evil, the public record by Mike King. On December 30th, 2020, the man who the FBI called the most prolific serial killer in U.S. history died in a California prison. Samuel Little committed his first homicide exactly 50 years ago today in 1970. Now, let's open an investigation. When Samuel Little was arrested in 2014 for murder, not much was known about him. Two years ago, the convicted killer admitted to killing 93 people over the last 50 years. Well, today, that man is dead. Samuel Little was born in 1940, the the grandson of a woman who raised him in Georgia. He started in school and, and struggled started committing burglaries and other crimes while he was a juvenile. By the time he was in his mid-twenties, he was working odd jobs in places like the local cemetery or on an ambulance crew. But his passion for crime continued. He racked up charges for DUI, fraud, larceny, solicitation, aggravated robbery, aggravated sexual assault, and rape. Now, according to media reports... He committed his first murder on New Year's Eve in 1970. You can follow a timeline of Little's life, including all the places that he lived and the locations he committed crimes, by going to Profiling Evil's story map on Samuel Little. I titled it, Confessions of a Serial Killer. I think you'll enjoy going through it, and it'll really give you a lot of content that you can explore, not only maps, but videos, etc. In fact... You'll see a video and a number of video clips where Little is confessing to a number of the murders that he committed. Tell me about Mary Ann. She's what you nowadays they call a transgender. She's a black male dressed up as a female. Okay. How tall is, is she? Mary Ann's about five, seven, seven. You'll also be intrigued to see some of the drawings that the killer made of his victims. You know, my hat goes off to the Texas Ranger, James Holland, who convinced Little to confess to his crimes. He was given the drawings by Little as part of uh, the process they were going through, and he keeps those in his office. Little told the detective that he targeted women on the fringes of society. These high-risk people like sex trade workers and drug addicts. People whose deaths he believed would not be investigated thoroughly by police. In some cases, that was true, but eventually... The law caught up with him. Now, Little remembered each victim in startling detail, recalling their facial features, things they talked about, the area where he committed the murders, and and even the disposal areas where he dumped their bodies. You know, one thing I found interesting is he even remembered the last meal that each victim ate. This serial killer preyed on the most vulnerable in our society. These victims who were compelled by need to uh, increase their level of personal risk just in order to survive. You know, we've got to do more to educate those around us about the ways in which we can reduce our personal risk level. I'd like to invite you to take a moment and listen to my videos on the victim risk continuum and share it with those around you. I think it's helpful. Now, here's an assignment for all of you. If you would, take a moment And in the chat box below, tell me if you think Little exaggerated the number of murders he committed or if he really has tried to minimize them and there are many more. I'd be interested in your comments and I look forward to reading them. Well, I hope you'll take a moment and hit the like and the subscribe button and join Profiling Evil's family. By doing so, you'll be reminded of other updates like this one where you can get a chance to hear more about things that I am looking into and what my thoughts are on the criminal cases that are going on around the world. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon at Profiling Evil. 